Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. O oh Lord, please light the fire that once burned bright and clear. Replace the lamp of my first love that burns with holy fear. O oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I see. For when your eyes are on these childs, these children, Miss Kathy and Mel and Sharon, <clears throat> your grace abounds to us. Good morning, Miss Joy. Oh Lord, please light our fires that once burn bright and clear. Replace the lamp of my first love that burns with holy fear. Oh yes. I mean let's let's put more oil on in the lamp, okay? And here it is. We have oil right in our hands to put in these lamps of ours that they might burn brighter, brighter, brighter than the noonday, brighter than the noonday. Well, good morning to you. The Lord has given us a brand new beautiful day, and here we are to give our first fruits to him, right, Miss Yolinda and Connie? Yes, our first fruits of the day. And Connie gives us a Hebrew greeting, shalom, peace. And it really means the kind of peace where there's nothing missing, nothing lacking. Nothing, everything taken care of. Hallelujah to the Lamb. <laughs> we receive that greeting. All right, today we will be reading the exciting chapter of 1 Samuel chapter 17 and part of 18, okay? 1 Samuel 17 and part of 18, the great story of David and Goliath. David and Goliath. And we know it well. And you know, we need to take a caution when we know a certain section of Scripture pretty well we just kind of enjoy it rather than really getting into it and studying it. So when I read it yesterday, <clears throat> I said to myself, now, Jane, let's see what you can pick up here that you might have been missing before. Just little important details that you kind of glossed over before. Miss Luann, I'm so happy that you are here for 1 Samuel 17. <clears throat> Let's get into it, and let's see what we can pick up that we might have missed before in the many times we've heard the true, the true story, the truth of what really happened between David and Goliath. And we know that David has been anointed, so God is going to use many ways to raise him up to this kingship that he's walking into. Because we have to take it, we have to deal with Saul, right? <laughs> now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and were gathered at Sokoch, which belongs to Judah, 
They encamped between Soho and Ezekah in Ephes Damamim, Dam, Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and they encamped in the valley of Elah. Okay? And they drew up in battle array against the Philistines. The Philistines stood on a mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side with a valley between them. <clears throat> Notice how close. I mean, they can see one another. They can see what's going on. And a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath from Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. Ooh, thick, thick. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, big. And his iron spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield bearer went before him. Then he stood, and he cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves. And let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. So, the Philistines seem to think that they are laying the entire battle on one person. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And they are looking at this giant. And he's asking for one man to come out. One man. And they are greatly afraid. Now David was the son of that Ephrathite of Bethlehem Judah, whose name was Jesse. And they don't pronounce the J's. <clears throat> so I'm caught between <clears throat> just being a plain old American here and saying Jesse or saying Yesse. And who had eight sons. And the man was old, advanced in years in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of his three sons who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest of the eight, and the three oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. 40 days. That wonderful number of days, and then God usually does something. Then Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an epath of this dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. So David rose early in the morning, 
left the sheep with a keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to fight and shouting for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in battle array, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gat, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words. So these people are going to hear it again. But David is hearing it for the first time. So David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich with great riches, will give him his daughter and give his father's house exemption from taxes in Israel. And then David spoke to the men who stood by him saying, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel, <clears throat> and then listen to what he has to say. They're all looking at the giant, scared to death. But here's David's description. Good morning, Miss Janine and Maria. Good to see you, ladies. Here's what David has to say about it. <clears throat> For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? There's his perspective. And the people answered him in this manner, saying, So shall it be done for the man who kills him. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David. And he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? little jealousy here of David's brave spirit. I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? <laughs> what have I done now means that this older brother has harassed him many times, right? What have I done now? Is there not a cause? There's the question of the moment, isn't it? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. Now when the words which David spoke were heard, they reported them to Saul, and he sent for him. And then David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant, and it's always good to rehearse your victories, when you're in a new battle. Let's get this lesson. It's a great lesson from David. David says, well, let me tell you about the other victories that I've had, okay? And that's what we need to speak into your present situation, okay? I just, mm, I felt all stirred up about that. He says, your servant used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went out after it and struck it 
and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it arose against me, I caught it by the beard and I struck and I killed it. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said, the Lord, now here we're down to what's really important, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. We're building ourselves a strong soldier. And guess how he's doing it? The words of his mouth. The declaration of his mouth. So important. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. I mean, Saul's been 40 days hoping somebody was going to step up. And it doesn't seem he's going to. <laughs> so Saul, <laughs> this is so funny, clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk. <laughs> for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Don't let somebody else step up and say what, how you should do something when you feel an anointing. Just go with the anointing. There's always going to be somebody crab that you aren't doing it right. But if there is an anointing, Go with it. So David does. Look at here. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook. <laughs> Can't you just see his brothers? His brothers are rolling their eyes going, oh, this kid. He thinks he's going out there with a stone. And he put them in a shepherd's bag. He didn't even leave them in his hand. He put them in a bag because that's how he did things, okay? In a pouch, which he had, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him. Notice that. I mean, this big giant's got this other guy out front, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and good-looking. Ah, check out Kathy's graphic. She's got a beauty of young David standing there getting ready to take that giant down. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. And then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And so it was. 
when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried as though the lion or the bear was there, right? And ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And then David put his hand in his bag and he took out a stone and he slung it and he struck the Philistine in his forehead. The only place not covered up. So that the stone sank into his forehead. That's the force. I mean, you see, David had done that um, how many times? We don't know how many times. Reach back, get the stone. He had it so well rehearsed. He knew. He knew. And that's what we need. We need to be well rehearsed in the Word of God. And we pull it out of our bag and sling it. Right? So David put his hand in his bag and he took out a stone and he slung it and he struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. Now he's at David's foot level. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Don't you think they told that for years and years? We're still telling it today. And struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and he stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines as far as the entrance of the valley to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell along the road to Sha'arim, even as far as Gath and Ekron, and then the children of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines, and they plundered their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And then Saul saw David going out against the Philistine. He said to Abner, the commander of the army, Abner, whose son? Is this youth? And Abner said, As your soul lives, O king, I, I do not know. So the king said, Inquire whose son this young man is. And then, as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Now he doesn't look like a ruddy youth in Saul's eyes anymore, does he? Standing there with that head. And Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? So David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. And we move along to chapter 18 of 1 Samuel. Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And don't you ever let anybody try to discuss with you and make that a sexual thing. That's not what it says at all. And haven't we all met a very good friend someone particularly within the body of Christ, that we just felt like our souls were knit together. It's beautiful. that we are, we are describing a beautiful thing here, okay? A beautiful thing, please. I'm going to say it again because Miss Donna has just arrived. Good, good, Donna. No, 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 you don't have to apologize, sister. Don't ever apologize. Miss Donna, we are just starting 1 Samuel chapter 18, okay, if you want to join in. And now when he had finished speaking to Saul, 
The soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Remember, that's exactly what the prophet Samuel said. He said, let me tell you how a king is going to act. If he sees something in you he likes, he's just going to take you. He didn't even ask David, right? He just took him. And then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. This is the son of the present king. Remember that? Who the king didn't even uphold when he got brave about going after the Philistines? So you can imagine where David's thinking and countenance were and how excited he was to see David step up with this bravery. Glory to God. Is that not beautiful? Wow, a lot of lessons in there for us. We move right along to the Gospel of John, Yohanan, chapter 8, and we pick up with verse 21. 21, okay? 8, 21. And then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Now get this, because this is true today. And then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. And then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me. I speak these things, and He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. For I always do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many, many believed in him. They recognized truth striking their soul and spirit. And they received him. Oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful passage. Every word just as potent and true today for our generation as then. We move right along now to Psalm 111, okay? 111, 111. It reminds me, I grew up at 111 Elm Street. <laughs> so when I see that, I'm reminded of my childhood. 
I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. Forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given food to those who fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He has declared to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. Got that? He gave them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity and justice. All his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all those who do his commandments. His praise endures forever. Oh, what a wonderful, uplifting psalm. Let these words bless your heart. Read them again, please, after we have finished our time together. Read them out loud for yourself and let the anointing of these words fill you and bless you and bring healing and deliverance to all the things that try to trouble you. Don't let them. Let the word of God rule. All right, we wrap up today with Proverbs 15, 11. Proverbs 15, 11. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more the hearts of the sons of men? It's like a question, but it's really a statement, isn't it? There's no question mark after that. Oh, what a rich, wonderful meal. What a great breakfast. Or maybe it's lunchtime or dinner time for you when you see this. Or the middle of the night. The middle of the night. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless you today, precious Father. Precious Abba. Abba, Father. Adonai, Elohim. Mm -mm -mm. Shalom, shalom, provider. We thank you, Lord, for this precious time, this brand new day, this time to regroup our life, to look over things, uh, things that troubled me yesterday uh, don't trouble me this morning. It's like I can, it's like they are minimized. It's, it's like David's words. He saw it. He saw Goliath as an uncircumcised Philistine who needed to be taken down. And that's the way I feel about all the things that yesterday I kind of put off. Today, I see a plan. I'm inspired. And that's the way the Holy Ghost works, isn't it? Holy Spirit, we want to thank you. We want to thank you that you have come to be with us, that you live in us, that you guide us, instruct us, comfort us. Ah, oh, Holy Spirit, you are our dearest friend. My dearest friend, Holy Spirit. So we thank you, precious Trinity, wonderful Father. We thank you, Jesus. 
that you fulfilled and are still fulfilling the word of God. It is your word. It is all about you. And you came and went to the cross just for us. That's the gospel. That's the good news. The good news is today, your sins have already been paid for. So, rejoice and be greatly joyful. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise right along with praying to you. And Lord, we lift up Israel, we lift up Yerushalayim to you, that your shalom peace would come upon them. That peace roll up and down the streets of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and all of the towns and villages of Israel. Let the peace of the Lord, the shalom peace, be in every home, within every family member. Let them be encouraged, and most of all, Lord, encourage, please, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and his government. Build it up, Lord, please. Build it up. Bring unity on issues. Cause them to work together. Cause them not to arrive ready to fight and divide and argue. Cause them to see their country. It's a miracle. I'm so sorry, Lord, I didn't remember to say in prayer that yesterday was a, an anniversary for your Israel, 72 years since May 14th, 1948, when you caused it in one day to become a nation once again. Ah, oh, we celebrate. We celebrate with all of the Jews this wonderful miracle, 72 years of miracle days. We bless you for it, Lord. It's a great testimony to us that these are the end days when we see you bringing your children home from the four corners of the earth to live once again on the land, making Aliyah, coming back. Ah, oh, after over 2,000 years of disbursement, that we should live now to see it. Thank you, Lord. What a special thing. Lord, I hold up America to you. I hold up President Trump, Lord. I thank you for the interviews that I, I heard from him in the middle of the night and how encouraging, how upbeat. He is just in the middle, the middle of a, a hard place. It's not a hard place. He doesn't act like that's a hard place. He is a visionary looking and saying, oh, in a year we will have it all back, build up. These are good words, Lord. They, they were comfort to my ears and my heart. And all of it comes from your hand and your timing. And so, Lord, it's a pleasure to come to you today, for you are the answer. We don't need any other answer. You're the whole answer. The whole plan is yours. And so we will live with peace in our hearts through these days, we will keep our eyes on you, Lord. Not on other things of the world. Not on all the troubles. Not on all of the past. Holy Spirit, help us to let go of the past and embrace today. It's a jewel. It's a treasure. You have given us life for this day. Help us, Lord, to live it in a holy and righteous way before you, that you will be pleased with us. All of God's children cried a hearty amen, went ahead with their own prayers, and I'm going to leave off here 
with a little scripture song that came to me because of the word we read. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. I love you all so much. Be blessed in Christ Jesus. Bye-bye.